Good afternoon, everyone. Glad you could all make it. Looks like we have a big crowd this afternoon. It should be interesting. I'm calling the Monday, September 25th, 2023, Education Operations Committee meeting to order. Agenda item number two, I'm seeking a motion to approve the minutes of August 28th, 2023. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Get on item number three. At this time, I would like to recognize speakers. And we do have some speakers. And as usual, I'll just uh, read this reminder. The board recognizes the value of the public comment and on educational issues and the importance of allowing members of the public to express themselves on district matters. Please identify yourself by name and state your address. Each statement made by a participant shall be three minutes in duration. The timing system will identify time remaining for the speaker. Speakers shall direct all comments to the board and not to the staff or other participants. Public comments may not identify specific personnel or students by name or through the use of sufficiently detailed description so as to identify the individual staff or member. With that, we'll start. Our first speaker is Leah Carroll. <clears throat> All right, can you hear me? We know. Okay. Thank you. All right, school board members, I am here tonight to address concerns I have about the decisions being made about science curriculum and facilities as we merge our schools. First, I want to, oh, I didn't state my name and address. I'm sorry, I just realized. Leah Carroll, 1109 Sylvan Street, Wassa. Okay. I want to highlight that the restructuring of this district is and always has been presented to the community as what is best for students. I'm not here to give my opinion on restructuring. I just want to make sure that the restructuring is done well. Now that this decision has been made to move forward, we must continuously ask whether each decision that is being made is still in the best interest of students. Science teachers from both high schools were aware of the lack of lab space and modernized facilities at West High School before the restructuring decision, decision was made to make West the high school, but it seems to have only come to the district's attention more recently. I have now learned about the idea that the district is pushing that all students be accelerated in science to take physical science as eighth graders and biology as freshmen, rather than the current model of physical science as freshmen and biology as sophomores. While some students are on this type of accelerated accelerated track both at East and West, most students are not ready for this fast track. The science standards have already been established by educators for age appropriate standards, so to shift them to fit building space and a subjective timeline does not make pedagogical sense and it is not what's in the best interest for most students, which is ultimately what we need to be thinking about. Furthermore, this will not solve the immediate problem of the lack of classrooms and lab space for science the first years after the merge. If the requirements for what we need in the new high school do not fit the space, then we need to make the space. Right now, we have the space for all of the science classes both schools offer in our two separate high schools, so why would we continue with the restructure if we are not going to have room for these classes when we merge? Limiting students' ability to take high school level classes in a core area to fit an arbitrary timeline does not put students' needs first. We need to push the restructure back a year or two to make sure that we have the facilities to support the classes that we should continue to offer at an age appropriate timeline because this is what's best for students. So I highly encourage you as school board members to come to both East and West to see the facilities to be able to make an educated decision as what is needed as we move forward with the restructure. Ideally, this should have been investigated ahead of time, but since this is new information to the board, we need to pause instead of just moving ahead. We need to fix the core of the issue, the lack of science labs and classrooms at West. The current proposals are a band-aid and will create further problems in the future. Thank you.
Hello. A little bit lower. Jake Engel, 6615 Connor Davis Drive in Wausau. I come to you guys tonight as a parent of a student in the Wausau School District and a parent who has taught a few years of science in the district as well, um, 17 of them. And when I saw the proposals and the numbers, first and foremost, about the science issue, I was taken aback as science is my son's favorite course. And for him to be two, three hundred students under a number that is necessary or over a number that's necessary to fit all those students, I was really taken aback. And the fact that actions requested tonight of the board really hit me hard, like why are we just bringing this up now seemingly, and I know it was talked about at a previous board meeting, but I think that's pretty quick. We spent months on the mascot, and I've gotten so many emails, which we appreciate as community members, but the mascot's not going to affect my son's future career. The science courses that he has available to him, the quality of the lab facilities is going to affect his uh, future going forward. He's going into science. Everyone who's ever met him says that that's going to be the case. So to know that he's going to lose some potential opportunities because of the lack of space, because we're moving forward, and he will be at that age right around when the schools you know, make that transition of the junior high and high school that it's going to have a big impact on him. So I'm extremely concerned as a parent. And then seeing the other proposals, I don't know what auto egg academy means, but if it means what I think it means, that someone can get science credit for an auxiliary class that kind of touches on science, then why shouldn't people get Spanish credit in a foods class when they do Latin cuisine? Or why shouldn't they get English credit when they do, you know, papers in history? Like, to me, that's cheapening what a science credit means in the Wausau School District, and that's not right to me, as having spent 17 years putting meaning behind the science credit. Like, that hurts the 17 years of my career, and I'm not happy about that as a parent. Um, what other things? Um, I mentioned this, these numbers and such at uh, lunch today in my job, and incredulity was the best um, description I could give from the other teachers' responses. And one teacher went as far as to say, I guess we need to build more science facilities onto our school now because they're insinuating that's going to be a very negative feedback from the community here in Wausau about not having the proper facilities for space um, and modernization for, for these, um, for the science class that are needed at high school. And then also to give, consider eighth grade credit, or high school credit for eighth grade science because of space. Are we doing that for English? Should we say eighth grade English is now worth an English credit? To me, that doesn't make a lot of sense just to fit a timeline and because we don't have the space right now. Let's go forward with restructuring, but let's do it at the right pace for the students, both pedagogically, as was mentioned in the previous speaker, and um, facility-wise. Thank you. We have two speakers. Uh, we'll move on. Our fourth agenda is Trust Connexus Donation. Gail Bushman, Director of Services, will accept a donation from the WA Trust Connexus. Thank you, and I'll, I'll accept it on behalf of the Wausau School District, not just for um, Yeah, right. As, uh, as we know, mental health and mental wellness is a, a significant issue that our community faces, our district faces, but not just our community, not just our district, but all communities and all districts. So um, schools work really hard in order to provide services for programming for our students um, to, uh, um, to address those. Uh, I'm going to introduce Andy Graham. I'm going to have I'm going to have him come up here for a second. In a minute, we're going to um, bring Steve Goldberg, who is the executive director of the WEEA Member Benefits Foundation, um, who we've talked about in a partnership in terms of bringing some funding to the district in order to provide some additional supports. Um, I'm going to have Andy just talk briefly with an idea of what 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 might be one of those additional supports that we can um, provide with the additional funding. Uh, thank you. I just want to mention that the position that we are creating is 100% grant funded. It is the Homeless Mental Health Navigator. And 
Our pupil service department, we're always looking at ways we can service students better. And through the YRBS survey data, we show, has shown that there's been an increase in student mental health needs across the district, across the county, and across the state. So for the last few years, I've been trying to hunt for grants to support our students. Luckily, we were able to receive $40,000 from DPI on a homelessness grant. And then, as you will learn, we received the extra funding from our community the way we are able to fund this position. Uh, a quick summary, the homelessness part will be supporting families and students experiencing homelessness. They'll be helping with transportation, helping students stay in their school of origin, and following the um, state guidelines and laws for students with homelessness. And then the mental health will be kind of a three-pronged approach. They'll be providing resources for students, teachers and families, but then also collaborating with other mental health navigators at DC Everest, Mosinee, Manaqua, and then provi providing community-wide services. So we're very excited to have this opportunity, um, having one person designated to supporting student mental health and supporting students experiencing homelessness is a great moving, great option moving forward for our students and I'm very pleased and excited. So, And with that, you guys hear from us enough, so we're gonna bring up Steve Goldberg, who is the executive director of, of Trust, mm -hmm. um, and he's gonna also um, introduce or bring up some of our other generous community um, partners. Thank you, Steve. So I'm Steve and he's not. Uh, actually, this, this is uh, Boyd Gusky from the Connexus Credit Union. You'll hear from him in a, in a few minutes. Uh, I'm Steve Goldberg, Executive Director of the WEA Member Benefits Foundation in Madison. Two hours if you stay close to the speed limit on the way up here. And um, the, the two of us are going to announce separate but related gifts to support the mental health programming here at the Wausau School District. But before we do, we both want to provide some context as to why we're making these gifts. You've already heard Cal and Andy explain how the gift is going to be used to support the cost of a full-time mental health navigator to serve the district. Um, and I'll say that in, in my work in this field, funding student mental health throughout the state, mental health navigators are becoming more and more common and more and more important in school districts because it's a complicated process. It's a complicated field. And the school district, the parents, the students, the educators need someone they can count on to coordinate all these moving parts and put students and families in touch with the right resources. And that's what this position, as Andy described it, is intended to do. So uh, you can look forward to some really good results from that. Um, the gift from the WEA Member Benefits Foundation uh, has its roots in a pilot project that we launched two years ago to expand private philanthropy support for school district mental health projects and programming. Private philanthropy doesn't have much of a history in supporting mental health in school districts, which is why the WEA Member Benefits Foundation decided to take a stab at this. So we launched a pilot project two years ago uh, involving five school districts, Appleton, Racine, Sun Prairie, Watertown, and Madison, where we tested a funding model designed to bring in more private philanthropy support for those mental health programs. We were able to help them uh, secure about a million dollars, $971,000 to be exact, to support and enhance their own mental health budgets at the district uh, level. That money was used to serve more than 5,000 students that those school districts were not able to serve in the past. So that has prompted us to uh, feel pretty good about the pilot and the funding model that's been tested and refined and to expand it to more school districts. And the first one that we have offered the funding to is Wausau. Uh, among the reasons, uh, we, found, we knew that Wausau School District offers a multi-tiered approach and a holistic approach to student mental health. And that is, it's following the framework recommended by the State Department of Public Instruction. Uh, has a good track record, uh, has some good people, two of whom you've, you've met tonight already, and you, you knew them, of course, before. And um, this is, uh, I think, a kind of school district that likes to collaborate with 
community partners and other school districts, and we like that because pound for pound, that means that uh, the resources and the funding that we can secure for, say, Mosinee County will uh, go a long way. Speaking of Mosinee County, we're about to uh, establish some dialogue with the Mosinee County School-Based Counseling Consortium, of which the Wausau District is, is a member. Uh, and there are some joint funding opportunities that we'd like to discuss with them. So we're helping school districts, including Wausau, secure additional support from other funding sources for its mental health programming. And the lead additional funder uh, is Connexus Credit Union. They came to us, wanted to know about this initiative, and uh, then reached out directly to the Wausau School District. And I'm pleased to introduce the CEO of Connexus Credit Union, Boyd Gusky, who will tell you a little more about the context of their gift. Thank you, Steve. Uh, good evening, board. It's a pleasure to I have to adjust my, my notes here, sit before you, and um, uh, say that we are truly grateful to be a part of this initiative. When Steve came forward, um, as you can imagine being a credit union in the banking industry, big on numbers, right? The statistics told the story. Um, in fact, it, it really gave me the chills. And, uh, to a person, I have part of our advisory committee right behind me here from Connexus. It's a cross-section of our employees uh, at various different levels in the organization. We knew we needed to help, and we're very um, honored to, uh, to just play a small part in that. So on behalf of our member owners, uh, we're owned by the people who bank with us. We have 430,000 member owners, our board of directors. And are more than, uh, or almost 700 dedicated employees that we have here in Wa well in Wausau and throughout the country. Um, appreciate the opportunity to one uh, partner with the WEA uh, Member Benefit Foundation, two support the student need of mental health. I, you know, I grew up in Central Wisconsin. Speaking of Mosinee, class of '84, uh, my dad was a teacher uh, there for over 30 years, and I raised my family up in Merrill. Uh, so I know this community very well, and I, having raised two kids, um, I, I know how much more difficult it is these days than I think back when I went to school. Uh, and then uh, three, expressed our sincere appreciation for uh, the school board. That's a tough job. Uh, I don't need to tell you that. Um, the administration, uh, the frontline employees, um, you know, the heroes of, of each and every day, right? The teachers and the staff that support them. Uh, and of course, the parents and the guardians uh, who also support these kids day in and day out. Uh, we appreciate all you do. So we are proud to play, like I say, just a small part in it, but this is one of the reasons that we strive so hard to be successful. We know the more successful we are, the more we can give back to the communities that we serve. And in the last four years, um, the communities that we serve, we've donated over $10 million. And um, we've made a three-year commitment to this project. And I hope it goes far beyond that, both our, our commitment as well as uh, this initiative. So thank you, I appreciate the time. Thank you, Boyd. We're about to uh, give the checks to you. Um, the check from Conexus Cares, which is the philanthropic arm of Conexus Credit Union, is for $40,000 a year for three years. And uh, it's unrestricted. All these grants and these programs are unrestricted. And the reason is we don't want to be the people who mandate how the money should be used. We want your mental health programming experts to make those decisions. So it's something called trust-based philanthropy. We trust you to make good use of the money. And in many cases, it's multiple year commitments. And the, the WEA Member Benefits Foundation uh, gift is $20,000, also a multi-year commitment. And we're both looking forward to seeing the smiles on your faces as we pull out these big checks. What I want to know is, since your check is bigger than ours, why does our check look bigger? <laughs> yeah, so explain this. Yeah, so uh, as uh, Steve mentioned, uh, our commitment is $40,000 a year for three years. So 
we want you to get traction, right? It, it takes time to get the momentum, but we want you to know the support is uh, is behind you each and every year. So that's why it's 120,000. That is why that's this is 20,000. We we jump started it, and together, Connexus and the WA Member Benefits Foundation are going to work this part of the state to help the school district attract additional dollars. This is just the tip of the iceberg, and you can count on us to help you strengthen your mental health budget. And uh, last year, emergency room visits by young people for depression, self-harm, and suicide tripled in, in this state. So the need continues to grow, and I know both of us feel that we're putting the money in good hands. So thanks for that opportunity. Um, do you want us to turn and show <laughs> them? <laughs> Where's the applause? We're going to have our pictures taken out here, I think. Is that right? Where are we going? Oh, we could maybe well, take it up front. I think that Dr. Phil and Jim, they told me that you would take a picture with them with the checks. Okay. Do you want us to do it well, so they can just sit where they are? We don't want to stress them out. I will go inside and let you have a meeting. We're pretty mobile. We're still walking. So this way? Right in this crowd in the background? Or do you want? You're the photographer. Right. Let's do the board. All right. Yep. Okay. Right in this open space here. Right here? Yeah, that's perfect. So one of you. And Kale and Andy. Paul works with us. He's done this a few times. Unfortunately, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good, yeah. Uh, it's a big chance. Yeah. Hold it together. Anybody else? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Got it? Well, it's a I do. <laughs> All right, everybody looking right here in three, two, one. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. One. 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 Two. Thank you. Good luck. Now, how do we beat that? <laughs> so, continuing the meeting, <laughs> that sounds to be so dry. That's pretty exciting. Again, thank them all. All right, agenda item number five, secondary science discussion. Wausau School District Administration will review secondary science enrollments and possible solutions for some bumps in the road. And I turn it over to you yep. with your team. Yep, thank you. Um, so good evening, everybody. Um, Cassie, if you could go to the next. So you know, you see that we have some folks here tonight to, uh, oh yeah, I'm sorry. Would you uh, come up, yeah, Jeb and Mike, Mark. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit tonight about um, science, a little bit about restructuring, a little bit about facilities, a little bit about curriculum. Um, and I want to start, so uh, I think everybody knows Mr. Steckbauer, Principal of Wausau West, Mr. Mark Ekus, Science Department Chair at Wausau East, and Mr. Mike Scheidler, Science Department Chair at Wausau West. Um, we've been having conversations um, for a while now about um, a number of, of Topics, but uh, tonight, you know, we're, like I said, we're going to talk a little bit about you know facilities and enrollment and, and programming. So, wanted to start just by you know setting the the stage about enrollment. And so, what you're looking at here are uh, two <coughs> graphs: uh, enrollment by grade level, 
and I know they're hard to read. Uh, the one on the left is uh, year 2022, one on the right is 2023, so that would be last year. You can see the trends uh, continue to show uh, a decline um, through the grade levels, which um, then uh, um, reports to us, you know, that decline in enrollment that we're expecting. Cassie, if you go to the next one. And then the next slide um, is the enrollment from the third Friday count. It's, it's unedited, it, it's close, there's probably a few students difference, but across the top is the actual enrollment by grade level, turned it into a bar graph so it's easier to see that same trend. A um, Couple of things you can see by, you know, through this data is one, that enrollment continues to trend downward. Um, and in the table to the lower left, what we attempted to do was to show uh, with just straight enrollment numbers. We didn't do any, um, you know, we didn't we didn't really examine the the, the changes that come as you know so there are sometimes some uh, homeschooled or private school students that come into the district from private schools. We didn't do any of, we didn't take any of that into account. We really just rolled the numbers up. So you can see that in the fall of twenty five. Um, at the senior high school, we would project um, a total enrollment in grades 10 through 12 of about 1,770 students. Each year, there's about 100 high school students that, uh, that uh, get educated in other programs, whether it's EEA, WAVE, Alt High. Um, so that averages about 100. So we just we took 100 off the top. So you can see that, that middle enro uh, enrollment um, line, it goes from about 1660 in 2526 down to about 1478 in 2930. Um, as we continue to look to the to the left into the younger grades, um, you'll see that enrollment will drop a little bit, it'll rise up a little bit. For about the next 10 years, that school would be serving about 1500 to 1600 students, somewhere in that. So we wanted to start with that. Cass, if you can go to the next one. Um, just want to uh, also remind people that we've been watching this trend for a while. This is a report from 2018 on some projections uh, that we got many years ago. That red arrow on the right shows where we are today. That blue line is the is the 9-12 um, projected enrollment. Um, you can see that little that little rise and then a slow decline. The, so the projections that we were working from have proven to be you know, fairly accurate. We're about 100 lower, but the trend has been about the same uh, or what it was projected. Next one, Cassie. Okay, let me pause here just for a minute. So what we're talking about tonight, a um, couple of things. First, um, we're talking about enrollment and pressure on Wasso West High School as a senior high school. Um, but it's more than just enrollments. Um, one thing that we've uh, learned over time, talking to Mr. Steckbauer who understands this better than I do, is that over the last 20 years, um, there's been programmatic changes that have also added pressure to the facilities. Um, I do want to say, in, in light of the comments that were, were shared earlier, we're not coming here for action tonight, right? No decisions have been made. This is, we've been looking at possible solutions for a while. Um, but we're here tonight to say, here are some possible solutions. We're here to, to get some feedback from the board about where your interests would be. And we're also anxious on Friday for our first independent learning day to meet with our, our secondary science staff and talk to them about this situation. Um, we talked about uh, it was mentioned that you know we've known about you know this the, the stress on the facilities for a while and that's true um, we've been exploring some solutions and frankly you want to pick the time where you where you start these conversations you know over the summer Frank sorry but not a lot of people are paying attention to schools um, and so we the our science leaders met over the summers explored this situation we developed some solutions and we didn't want to put this out we really wanted to start the school year um, and then re-engage in this conversation so that hence the timing plus the that independent learning day on Friday we, where we could meet with our science teachers in person so with that, uh, I'd like to ask Mr. Steckbauer to talk a little bit about uh, the enrollments. We've got some numbers here. Um, these gentlemen have done, understand this, not just the curriculum and the enrollment, but the programming and the scheduling. Um, so that's why we've invited them here tonight. Appreciate you being here. 
Um, thank you for having me. Um, so just a couple of things to understand. There are, when we look ahead, there's going to be a couple of things that are, are unknown and there always are. Okay. So finding, you know, I know over the course of last year, everybody wants the exact count of things and, and there's a lot of what ifs for that. So what we've, what we've done to try to look at this is we did the best we could to take into account Wasa West enrollments and registrations and Wasa East ones. And we uh, have not totally decided on how those are all going to fit together. That's part of what we're going to be talking about, I guess, on Friday. We started that in the summer a little bit. Um, so our department leaders kind of took these numbers and they, they put them together the best they, that they could. You know, this class is pretty similar, so we, we're going to put those numbers together, break them down into sections, and that's kind of how we did this. So when we're talking about what we're looking at for our lab usage and our room usage, we still have, I mean, it's not an exact science. We feel like we're definitely in the ballpark as we look at things. So I think that's, that's one important thing. The other important thing to remember is that our kids, which I think is a testament to our science staff um, and, and our programming over the years, we have a requirement in our district for, uh, for kids to take three science credits. And um, I believe Keith has some of those numbers up there, but we have plenty of kids who take way more than just three credits, which is a great thing. And, but that also leads to where we can't say three credits, we know exactly then the number of kids we have, this is exactly how many rooms we need. So there, there's that, um, that piece in there. Um, so that next kind of part that is a little bit of an unknown is we're, we're going to have a different environment. We're going to be at you know, a 10, 12 senior high. I would suspect there's going to be a little bit of ebb and flow, but I also think that I think we can look at consistently at the last number of years and, and we're going to see kids um, continuing to take well over the three credit limit. How much exactly is where we have some, some questions. So um, any, any questions on that piece of it? Okay. Why don't you continue? What's that? Just continue. Okay. Okay. Great. Um, so, um, so, this is the part where uh, Mike Scheidler is probably the expert, not, not to take away from Mark, but Mike scheduled the, the West Building a lot. This is the part where there's some guesstimations on, in terms of registrations that we're looking at. Um, the other thing that I want to be careful about is when we look at the number right now, uh, we will have, in, uh, Dr. Hills put, put up where, yes, a, about 100 students go to the to the tech or other programs. However, right now they are too, and we don't typically um, advertise our enrollment with those numbers out. So right now, with the, say it at our place anyway, the 1461, some of those kids are at the, the tech. So um, I, I just don't want that to, to throw you, because sometimes mm -hmm. that, um, if we don't take that into account, it looks like we have a, maybe a lot more space than maybe Okay, so this next part, then we're, we're talking about 1,700 17 to 1,800 uh, registrations, and we're, that's a guesstimation because of what we have right now, we have over, just over 1,500 per semester with the, you know, 1,460 kids that we have enrolled. Remember, some of those aren't at West, and we still have over 1,500 registrations per semester. So we're, as we move up our, our, our population, our enrollment, then we're, we're upping that number of registrations. So that's then what we're taking to kind of divvy that out into sections. And as Mike will, will tell you, some of this is definitely the sections that we get based exactly on numbers. But some of this is also the, the different courses that we have. And, um, and, and there's, there's a few things that go into that. One big example is when you have different courses, and we talk about room usage, if we talk about, say, a math room, uh, typically anyway, a typical math room is a, one teacher can come in and teach a math class, and at the end of that class, walk out, and another teacher can step in. 
when we're talking about our science labs, you have set up and take down. So it's, it's not exactly that, that same thing, and sometimes you need a gap between that. So we're trying to figure some of that in right now as well. And, and what I'm trying to do is describe there's some questions out there yet as we go, as we continue to try to meld the, the curricula together and the courses. And that's what we're doing with our science uh, re restructuring curriculum team. And we're trying to put those courses together to really see what we'll offer. And then ultimately, obviously, we'll have a registration from our kids at East and West to, to do that. Um, do you want to add anything on that, Mike? Um, we got seven lab rooms at West. They built East with 1,200 students in mind. West was built with the 1,800 students, which we had at one point in time. We have seven lab rooms, so we have three less than East has right now. Um, if we were trying to put 1,800 students there right now, we would use every single minute in every one of our lab rooms, and we would be averaging 37 students per class. So right now, we don't have the room to do it. Mm -hmm. um, with IB and AP being offered, IB comes with its own stipulations uh, and things that you have to do to have an, the IB program, which is different than the AP program. That takes up more room usage. I can't just put IB and AP in the same room and have them teach it because they are different classes. Um, every time we have an elective change, so electives take up more space, uh, or more time, I should say, in the schedule. If I can run Science 9 all day long, it's very efficient scheduling. I can, I can pop teachers in there. But if I have two different electives sharing the same room, like Jeb was saying, there's the setup, there's the takedown. You can't schedule them back to back. So that makes it a little bit less efficient. Um, so if we're going to offer all the electives that we're offering between the two schools, um, that's going to take up more time in those rooms. So right now, I don't see a way that we can do it with the seven classrooms that we have. Andrew, I'm pressing from there, right? Um, you mentioned that there used to be roughly 1,800 students at West. Um, were there more than seven, seven science rooms back then? There was eight science rooms at that point in time. Um, we schedule outside of our department a lot. Um, Alex Barazin is right there. He's our AP chemistry teacher. Uh, he teaches three times, or three to three of the five times each week outside of the department. So when we do combine schools, when we do merge together, I'm assuming those resources are going to dry up because English is going to need an extra room that day, or math is going to need an extra room. So right now it's very easy um, for Alex Brazen to. Am I not loud enough for you? No, I just okay. Uh, record the video. Okay, gotcha. Um, so, and several teachers teach outside of the department, and that's how we make it work. Um, the last referendum that went through, foreign language got more rooms up on second floor, math got more rooms up on second floor. I was not department chair at the time, I was probably only there for maybe five years, um, but our department chairperson didn't ask for any more classrooms. So right now at West, most departments are operating close to a one teacher to one room ratio right now. So I think there's like 13 English teachers. I think they have 12 rooms. I might be a little off on that, but most of the rooms are that way. Uh, right now, we're operating 13 teachers to seven rooms. If and I could just throw in here, if yep. I'm not mistaken, my history coming back to me right now, um, at 1,800 students at West at one time, the mandate for science was only two credit, correct? Two credits and the mods. Unlike now, and plus all the electives that we now have Correct. as well. Those Correct. were not offered in, in the picture at all when it was 1800. When I first started, a lot of classes were nine mods, nine 20 minute periods. Now they're 11. Uh, classes like AP Chemistry is operating at 15 mods. So some of those, those upper level courses where you get college credit, they're going more than the 11 mod Sorry. mandated time. So. Nope, not going to say it again. <laughs> um, so classes have changed. The environment's changed. Had open campus back there, less credits to graduate. Um, so all those things kind of have added up to we need more space to make this work. And again, you built East High School with 10 classrooms for 1,200 students. I, I guess my biggest question is, knowing that it had changed from 1,800 students 
down to where we're at now, not offering as many courses that we have offered today. Mandate's not there like we have today. My question keeps on asking, why didn't we know about this a little sooner and expect this to have to be done instead of just, well, it's possible. I think the board would have looked at things differently if this would have been, we need this to consolidate. Now, I'm speaking only for myself. I'm not speaking for anyone here. I'm just throwing it out based on looking back on history and looking at the mandates and education and science and all of that. I'm just wondering why couldn't we have known this a little sooner? But the short answer is, Jim, we should have known it sooner. The fact that we're sitting here today with, Jeb, I just got your voicemail today. Construction starts tomorrow, right? Yes. 30 million bucks. How, mon how much of that is, do we even have contemplated for science rooms? Well, I can speak Besides that. ceiling tiles and door handles. I can speak to that a little bit. So when we, when we prepared for the referendum, we were not considering restructuring. And in fact, there were some informal right. talks and discussions about restructuring. And, but those at that time didn't, did not talk about 10, 12. It was mostly a 9, 10, and 11, 12. So actually, we were looking at, in the future, a declining enrollment or a restructuring, which would have declined our enrollment up. It would have up the east. We'd have been each about 1,200 at that time. So when, when the nexus came through, and that was, I don't know exact date, but I think it was like 2018 or, or somewhere in there. It was right before um, the pandemic. Um, we were not looking at expanding for uh, really a larger enrollment. So the answer is zero, essentially. We're not contemplating anything of the $30 million to expand our science capacity or offerings. Well, I think we'd like to. No, no, no. I'm just saying with what is passed and no, with what correct. Nexus has on yes, paper sorry. today, yeah. there's zero dollars going towards it. Correct. And the board made that decision based on the information presented to us and the priorities that we were presented, including weight rooms, community rooms, turf, all this other stuff. This never came up once. Unless I miss my, <clears throat> I'm getting old, so maybe before, I forgot. Do you mean before we were restructuring? Yes. As we set the plan for Wasa West, July 10th, we approved a 95% design plan. There was never any discussion about any capacity needed for science. To, yes. In the early, early on, we asked for, we, we were really wanting those two floors above the office area to be science. And part of, not all of them, but some of them were going to be devoted to science, yes. But that's still two different topics because what, what was created for the referendum was to meet the students' needs and staff needs at West in the current arrangement, period. Right. And now, because we're taking a look at curriculum, now we need the extra space. So however you look at it, Pat, right, the, the adding of six or 12 extra classrooms above the new office edition is com a complete afterthought because the referendum was already passed in 22. Correct. So it's it's a completely separate, you know, discussion. Now, if you want to, I, I kind of curious, are we not, and I was part of the design meetings, and I don't actually remember talking about this, are we not updating the science labs a little bit, at least, even the seven rooms that we have? Uh, uh, there, is, there is minimal, uh, minimal some stuff. casework uh, okay. types of things. Some, like, yeah, it's, it's ceiling tiles, door yeah. handles, and what else? It's not I'm expensive. sure it'll be prettier, but it's not going to be much okay. more functional. Right. If, yeah. If we have, and, and teachers from other subjects, uh, teachers from other subjects won't like to hear this, but um, if we have other subjects that are almost one-to-one -one and science isn't, but science to me seems like the one that needs to be one-to-one -one more than any other subject, even if we don't merge the schools, even if we never ever thought of that, just based on who's there now, Shouldn't, shouldn't we change something now to make science the, the subject that needs one-to-one -one more than any other to be closer to one-to-one? -one? At, at the detriment of some of the other subjects, I understand that that's a negative to the other subjects, but it seems like science would be the hardest to travel, the hardest to move around. Yeah, and I mean, certainly we may have to look at that. One, one of the things to, that, that I've seen is that, so when we were, um, when we had enrollment 1700 or whatever it was at that time, we, we declined and we spread out. 
So departments, I'm sure that that happened. We were not pressed for space, but now as we move up and we're expecting additional students, we may have to do some of that. However, all of those departments are going to be increasing in enrollment as well. And we're going to be back to at least much closer to where we're on carts. And the, I mean, the traditional flex mod has had people out of offices and heading to classrooms and that's kind of how, how it goes. And there, the, um, when I first got to West and our enrollment was high, there were much, many fewer students or teachers that that was their room and nobody else came to it. In fact, I don't know how much of that is even happening right now. I think that we definitely have rooms that are empty here and there throughout the day, just because of the puzzle and how it fits together. But as we have crept up in enrollment, and if we add another two to 300 kids, we're going to be pushing that in those areas as well. And I know that one of, one of the possible solutions is the addition of space. So I don't mean to jump ahead mm -hmm. to possible solutions. I'm trying to get to the last slide before we get there. Yeah, Sorry. right, right. But I, I have a question on that. My question is, has this been talked about with the staff so that they understand that, you know, I've been in the buildings where teachers came out of the offices and had to get to a classroom because the classrooms are being shared, and things of that fashion. I've been in the, cl the classroom when I've had my own classroom. And we all become a little, a little bit of ownership comes with our, our classrooms and our own personalities come in our classrooms. But if our staff isn't prepared to understand that they're gonna start moving around, I'm talk not talking about science now, I'm talking about the English department, the world language department, and things of that fashion. Uh, they need to be aware of that's going to be a part of the change as well. Now, I hate to see anybody blindsided by this because these are things that need to be talked about now, especially with curriculum. Right now in our department, eight of the 13 of our teachers are in multiple rooms each day. So the science department's kind of very well versed on it. There's only one teacher um, that is in one room one day, and that's the only teacher in that room. Otherwise, we're always sharing rooms. Some rooms might have three or four different teachers in them in a school day. So, so we're, we're, we're leveraging what we have right now to the utmost that we can possibly do it. There's, there's just no more wiggle room. Well, I, I'm not pointing the finger at science because I know that the problem, and I know how it is a problem. I'm just looking at the fact, being a person that moved from department to department to department, I understand that you got to be ready to do that, and I was ready to do that. So I'm kind of using my own experience to ask the question for others coming into that situation, are they going to be aware of this? Because you want to stay at about 75, 80% occupancy with the classrooms. You don't want to have a classroom not used. I mean, that's... That's efficiency, which we're looking at and which we need to know because of our people that are putting us into these positions. Our constituents want us to be fiscally sound. So being at about 80% full is a, is a good number. And I don't know what your numbers are, Jeff. So I, well, <clears throat> just to, to speak to that a little bit, we are, I mean, part of what you're talking about is, is, is happening because when we add this many kids, we needed quite a few more science rooms than we needed in, in the other areas, okay? But we're not gonna have leftover rooms in these other areas when we've added. We're gonna be tight. And so, um, but science was one, and Mike described it, that needs some additional. You wanna continue? Yeah. Unless we have more questions. Okay. So this just goes into a little bit more detail. Um, I, I kind of, jumped ahead when I talked about the credits. Um, again, a testament to our, our teaching staff at both schools, but a lot of our kids, it's not just, you can't just, I guess the point here is you can't just take the number of students and say, we'll figure out three credits for each one and that, that's it. It's a lot more than that. And again, I think, you know, our kids have had a, a robust science experience. Yeah, I can. Yes. Yeah. So this one just projects. So at the beginning of of the of the projected merger in the fall of 25, that enrollment, like I said, would be about 
16 to 1700. Over the next 10 years, once it reduces, it'll be in that 15 to 1600 range. And so we just took, so Jeb had done, and the, and excuse me, um, I don't know if it's guidance or, or science staff, they project, they, they estimated or calculated the number of credits that students take before they graduate. So roughly, so like Jeb was mentioning earlier, roughly half of our students before they graduate take one semester to one year additional science and about 30% of our students take about, um, take five credits. So two full years beyond. So we just took those numbers, uh, added it or projected onto this new enrollment number. And that's where we're coming up with, um, you know, these, these projections. Do you, do you guys, just to clarify, do you have adequate space right now? Yeah. Define adequate. Everything. Every, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Alex Brazen teaches, like I said, mm -hmm. three out of the five days outside of the department. Every one of our classes does a large group, so we are outside of the department. Um, if we were to become more like a traditional school or some of the other disciplines in our building where like maybe math is in a math room four or five days a week, we definitely could not do that. So, okay. so when East comes over, um, they're going to have to kind of do it the Wausau West way as far as probably do large groups and stuff to be able to make this work. Otherwise, if everyone said, no, I want to do my four or five days in a traditional classroom, same kids, same time every day, we won't have space for them. Okay, so that was, to Pat's point, that was kind of missed at the beginning then because the remodel is supposed to fix the building for the current number of students and the current arrangement of the district and that wasn't met okay right. thank, and West, thank you for and, clarifying and west isn't designed to teach the way that you just described that right. is taught at east west is designed to have small rooms and large rooms and and so mm -hmm. that's that's what west is designed for so yeah. um this this let this slide is is talking about um some possible solutions uh, but so I think it's prioritizing you know what our values are what we want for a science education um, anything can work with I mean if you talk about I mean there's all kinds of options zero hour after school there's um, you know utilizing our um, uh, online kind of type of either fully online or blended those kinds of things so there are options, I guess, but we need to settle on, are those options the right options for our, our kids and for our district? Can you explain, Keith, what those actually mean? Sure, I can, yeah. some confusion about what yeah. those bullet points mean. Yeah, yeah. So, like I said, you know, some brainstorming. Um, so the additional science labs, frankly, would be our, our preferred. This is, if, if you go back to the original restructure, um, motion, you might recall that we had said, hey, let's, can we add two stories to the, to the front of West? We knew this was going to be a problem back then. Um, at that time, you know, it, it wasn't, it, uh, that wasn't passed. So we've been kind of exploring options. So now that would still be our, our number one option. Just and we were going to hold on one second though, yeah. on that point, that the additional space that was asked for, this was never mentioned. It was, it was mentioned as, we'll be able to do it, it will be tight. There was never any conversation. This is more than a we'll be able to do it. This is we can't do science in our restructured environment. So I, I yeah, have I, to respectfully disagree that that was not presented the way you just described it. Well, okay, we'll have to disagree um, because we talked about this being tight, about, you know, about needing to do some things differently to make this work. Um, and so... We've been exploring, but so again, that those those additional science labs would be our, our our first solution here. We did explore the idea, and we've some people have mentioned it tonight, um, of offering eighth grade science for credit. Um, I, I was I was listening intently to the comments earlier, um, and you know, you know this is something that is allowable. We've talked to DPI, we've done some work. We came here tonight. To, to share some of these solutions with the board to see what is of interest. Um, but I, like I said to, you know, we're very anxious to talk to the science teachers on Friday. 
right, and get, you know, explain more about this. There's, you know, now there's rumors and, you know, and, and misinformation out there too. So we want to talk to them on Friday and talk about what this might look like. Um, but we wanted to bring it to the board first. So if that's of interest, we've done some more work on that. Certainly um, talk about it. Portable classrooms, we're getting rid of a couple of them. That would be something we could we could bring back for short term. Zero hour means, you know, offering a class outside of the normal school day, again, to relieve pressure on the school. Blended classes could be part in person, part online. Um, NTC is, a, is an awesome partner for us. And one of the um, one of the things we'd like to do regardless is increase the number of students who take part in um, um, college courses before they graduate. So we'd look at that. The Auto Ag Academy, this this is just, you know, we, we know we have a, a beautiful auto facility at East. We also have beautiful ag facilities. We're talking about um, students being able to uh, spend their days at East in a um, cohort of students who are interested in autos or a, stu or a cohort of students that's interested in ag, not necessarily for science credit, but they would be at the east campus and again reducing uh, pressure on the west campus. We've got other uh, opportunities. Project Lead the Way is another awesome opportunity. Very few uh, students take that for science credit is my understanding. So that would be something. And of course, we've got other programs we could move out. So we've talked about a number of solutions. Um, but tonight we wanted to come and introduce the challenge, introduce, um, you know, make sure the board understands that. Um, propose some possible solutions, see where the interest is, talk to our, our staff, and then come back with some more fleshed out proposals. The eighth grade thing, I gave it some more thought after reading and hearing the comments today. Um, I, I'm sure that we have students that are easily can handle, you know, ninth grade science at eighth grade level. And if that, but, you, but that being only one idea, you know, how much pressure is that really going to relieve on you? I guess you, you'd have to analyze that. And I'm not expecting an answer now. It's just, um, but I would think that, uh, again, a lot of our students are fall into the, the non-accelerated path, right? And they, they just need to go through the, the steps that have been set up and has been successful already. So switch, switching the whole thing, I don't know that I would, Unless you can show me data other the, to support that, I don't think I would support that at this time. But being able to have that opportunity for eighth graders at the East Campus in the future, I don't can't see that as a negative, right? And that may help you a bit. We talked about that on, on Wednesday because I I didn't love the eighth grade for science requiring, but I I said, well, what about um, just making it an option for the eighth graders? And what we talked about it last week in that meeting was um, those kids probably would take science every single semester anyway in high school. So that probably wouldn't actually, it, it might be a good opportunity to explore anyway, but it probably wouldn't help with space because if, you know, 75 kids or so kind of like who take accelerated math decided to take accelerated science, they'd probably take science each semester in high school anyway. So it probably wouldn't save on space. Well, I'm sure you're already looking at these types of things. It's more of a problem for staffing because you can't have a K through eight teacher license teaching a high school credit in order to give high school credit. So I think we need to talk about that. We need to have the right staff members and personnel in that situation. I'm a proponent of it because I like acceleration. I like the idea in, that students would have the opportunity to accelerate, to have their two labs taken care of, so that that means their sophomore year, they're looking at advanced algebra and chemistry, and they're moving on, and they could be going on to other options in, in science, or they have the option to go into some of the other uh, courses in other departments. And Jim, that acceleration at West Habits today with Science 910. Well, so, they're, exactly. so, so they're doing freshman, sophomore, freshman year. So then, you know, they're, they're in chemistry, I'm 
thing with my daughters, and she was in chemistry and now AP chemistry as, as a junior. So they can accelerate in this current model, just not post restructuring with the, the, con, the right, space constraint issue. Giving the offering to more students and to give the offering of uh, eighth grade. Uh, giving a high school yeah. credit for it. It's kind of like uh, dual credit at the high school into the college level. It gives a lot of choices, and that would sure. loosen up some some aspects in the science department, and also I'm thinking for the electives and some of the other courses that they could go into as well. I mean, we're looking at what can we do to give options to students and families, but yet understanding we need to make sure that we're taking care of all students mm -hmm. and not singular upper level students, but we also have the IAP students that I'm always very concerned about, that we make sure that we're giving them the right amount of sciences as well. I think the other combination of some of the courses, co-teaching classes, sometimes could give another option as we take a look at things. I'm just throwing that out, you know. So, so is there anyone, and truly just as the staff that's here and board members, aside from additional science labs, is, are there any of those other options that anyone thinks are remotely possible in terms of delivering a quality science program post restructuring? I think I think there's other ones that have some promise, but wouldn't be a solution, right? Like like having the Auto Ag Academy, I think sounds like a good idea. Ag agree. That may take some students out of the West Campus, which may open up some other rooms, but I. Like, I don't think we can count on that kind of stuff as a solution. I, so I think that's why the adding more rooms is the number one. Right, and that's what I'm saying. I mean, can we just expedite the conversation? If you guys are meeting on, on Friday, why waste everybody's time going through, I don't mean waste, why take time going through options that I don't see any of the board members shaking their heads like, hey, these are going to work or we would support these. I sure as heck can see the staff saying that. So why not just focus on we need this additional space, we have a cost for it. That's another conversation for the board to figure out funding for this and the rebranding and busing and everything else that's gonna be added on. Um, and look at this in totality of the restructuring costs as a whole. Yes, I, I agreed with everything you just said. Um, the, 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 the zero hour, the blended, you know, those kinds of, those kinds of solutions, um, you know, we could, implement those, you know, without board approval. We would certainly tell you if we were making some changes like that. However, what we what we wanted to talk to you about was, is obviously the additional science spaces. And then if we were interested in an eighth grade solution, and, and on Friday, I, I want to present a more fleshed out eighth grade concept to the science teachers so they can understand what it is we've, you know, that we've, you know, the work we've done to date and, and get their feedback on that. That would also require board approval for any middle school class to be offered for high school credit. So, so those would be the two that would, that would require board action. Um, the rest, partly we want to let you know that we've, we've thought about this from a variety of angles. Um, but you're right. Those top two are the are the, the two that require the most exploration. You know, before going forward, I mean, I want to hear more from what the department heads have to say. I think they're more knowledgeable on what needs to be done and, and come up with potential solutions that we can hear in a timely fashion before making any decision on anything. And, you know, I mean, you were going to say something before. If you want to go ahead, I want to hear it, please. Mm -hmm. um, you were talking about some of these that I think Pat kind of right on the head. I mean, I can go through this list and tell you things that I don't like about it, um, things that I've experienced. I've experienced zero hour before. I've experienced the blending classes before. Um, but like Dr. Hills was saying, these are these are options here. Um, if you want me to go through them, I will. But um, I think I think Pat kind of said, let's, let's get to it. I just don't have the patience. I'm sorry. Well, and I, I have a, a comment and a question, but a comment on that is I think we have to remember that we as the board directed administration to come to us with this brainstorming thing every step along the way, not to flesh it all out and then come to us with a recommendation that we vote yes or no on. Like we told them we want to see the sauces that are just being made and come to us with this stuff. So like that was our request. Um, but a question I have is regarding portable classrooms. I think the last time we looked into portable classrooms, even though 
they were cheaper than adding on, they still were horribly expensive, so we'll probably get to the same result again. But I think given that we know we're just going to have this sort of bubble going through, I think you got to at least include that cost in the analysis to have us look at mm -hmm. that. I suspect we'll get to the same thing we did the last time. I think you were on the board once. We talked about portable classrooms. We oh, found yeah. out how expensive they were, and they were horrible. Um, but I think when you look at these projected enrollments and we see how it's going to go up and then it's going to go back down, that alone makes me think we have to at least have portable classrooms on the well, and table. Just to speak to that, though, I when it, it is a bubble, but it seems that when it comes back down, it'll still be 15 to 1,600 students, which is more than what West is serving right now. And it sounds like it's already too tight right now. So I don't know that that's a real feasible option. I mean, if, if what we're trying to do is um, build for the future and build for excellence across all our departments, of course, um, but certainly in science, and science has a need, I, I just don't see how any other solution is feasible. Well, and remember, that. part of restructuring is projected that we get back kids that are going to other districts. So right. that is so, 25, I think it was 25 students per year we're anticipated to grow. So whatever dip in this bubble that we have, if this restructuring delivers what it's supposed to, we should see that continue to trend up. And a strong so science back department to... is what draw. I mean, right. not just science, of course, but every department that has strength is what draws people to a school, right? right? Mm -hmm. And so I don't think for any minute we should consider anything other than doing what's best and better for the future certainly for our I think that's where we land, but let me just make sure I'm clear. Um, the portable classroom that I was thinking of that I even said I don't think we'd actually land on it wouldn't be for science. Right. Because science needs the extra rooms now. Sure. So wait, what it would mean is science would take over the rooms that they should have already, and the, some other subject would use the portable classroom for this bubble and then go back to sharing classrooms after that. Not the preferred solution, but depending on the cost, it, it just might be an option. But another thing that we're also very concerned about, and one of the things that we talked about a long time ago was safety and security. Uh, portables are not safe and secure. Uh, we've seen those portables that uh, were only going to be temporary at Wausau <laughs> West for a couple of years, 25 years ago. Uh, they tomorrow. were still in you, practice you, uh, <laughs> last year. You're you going to tell them to unhitch tonight, Joe? <laughs> So I, think, so I think so I think we need to continue to all, always and I agree with what uh, is being put out on the table is that we're going to do this we got to do it right for the future today and into the future but also safe and secure as well and there's a concept of uh, I'm sorry John just one other thing so when we're talking about the restructuring all we've talked about so far is building to parity right essentially keeping what we have today what about the conversation of evolving that to the next generation what is going to be needed in those labs. What is needed today, just from a, a hardware perspective, I don't even know what the right term is, but you know what's needed today that you, the, the staff would be looking at this mm -hmm. and saying, holy cow, imagine what we could do if we had X, Y, and Z. To me, those are the conversations that should be happening during these, you know, some of these professional development times. So the terminology yes. you're looking for is not just best practices, but what are the next best practices? And on that, I know it's more than beakers and test tubes, so there's going to be other stuff out there. On that note with restructuring, that's why we're talking about this. We have the hard trends of declining enrollment. We're hoping that it grows back. But to regain efficiencies in programs, we have two sides of the river where we're doing science programs. And when we have members of the community that connects us that want to give a grant or do something, we want to do a robotics lab or some new equipment and we want to do that really well and give all kids access to it that's what this should lead to this should lead to efficiencies and streamlining and aligning our programs and giving every kid access to it instead of maybe doing a really cool what we have now an auto facility on one side of the river and not really having good access you know so let's be smarter about what we're doing we have hard trends that are happening declining enrollment and you know, we talk about it here one that gets missed a lot is labor participation a lot of uh, younger baby boomer teachers and even older Xers are retiring at a pace that can't be replaced. Um, you know, declining enrollment is also a function of people not having as many kids. People aren't flocking, you know, to the Wausau, you know, area like they are Sun Prairie. That's why Sun Prairie is expanding. So there, these are the things that we have left to dealt with in a district that's spread out quite thin. So what do we do to be smart 
and, and do the best programs and give all kids access through that program. And I see that we're a little tight. We knew that restructuring, that there would be things that would come up along the way. And I hope that we see this as a glass half full opportunity to get together, solve problems, and put ourselves in a position for the next 10 to 20 years to really provide these, you know, the education and, and, uh, and programs that are more efficient and, and hopefully obviously better um, so that community members will participate maybe even more than they already do today. And if I can follow that, um, and I know we're supposed to have an annual meeting starting right now, but it's exciting because this is a once in a lifetime, a once in a career opportunity to redevelop an entire school system, an entire curriculum, revisit what might be possible. So yes, this is, you know, I, as, as we spoke last week, this is one of those things that comes up and says, this causes us to pause. But, but the goal is still the same, create the best opportunities for students and create the best environment for our staff. So that's our goal. Um, this is something we wanted to bring to the board for awareness. Um, we'll talk to the, the staff on Friday um, and we'll, we'll start creating those creative solutions with, with the whole team on that day, right? So, who, who would we contact, Jeff? Just go through you if we wanted to take a tour of the current. I, it's been a while since I've seen those. I would just be curious to ref refresh my mind. With. Yeah, we I'll can bring the my, board through. I'll take my annual tour. Say so we can. Okay. And I'll get back more to East as well. Uh, Flashbacks to Mr. Hageman's science class. So that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I'm going to pick up on um, Pat's comment about being impatient. And I think you basically have gotten this from all the board members. In fact, figure it out. We appreciate the information as Lance pointed out. That's what we wanted. We wanted to know about this. And then we wanted to be able to put some comments out there from our ignorant point of view. But we're wise, but we're not aware of everything. Mm -hmm. We're not aware of everything. So consequently, we'd like to see what you come up with. And as a group, I look forward to seeing the science departments working together and, and uh, really putting some 21st century details together, next best practices moving forward. So, Jim, one other comment I forgot about. Has there been any discussion about the tech ed? Because I have heard anecdotally from staff that they are concerned about the same space issues for the tech ed programs post-merger. So if we haven't had those yet, I would encourage that to begin ASAP so we can consider it again in totality. If it's going to be an issue. Let's put that on the tail because that's a good point to make sure that we're seeing everything as we're moving forward. Just want to suggest we had posted the annual meeting for six o'clock. We've got a crowd here that I wonder if we could just introduce the end of referendum proposal, the, some of those projects, some of the costs, because this is this ties into that. And then we could move. We could just introduce it. We, you know, so the board's aware and everybody's aware, and then we could come back to it when we've fleshed some more of this out. Or do you want to go right to the annual meeting and then let's, come let's back just, to this? Let's pick okay. the end of this and let's right. move on with that. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Talk some more. Thank you. So Mr. Vigut uh, has, has done a lot of work on... Um, you know, identifying some some revenue sources, some possible referendum, uh, some projects that could be considered. And so, thank you. Go ahead, Josh. Yeah, and we will keep this quick and we can go into more depth at another time. So, um, last meeting or maybe the meeting before, we talked about some district-wide priorities now that we have the majority of um, the projects at least bid, so we have a good idea. So I just want to run through that really quickly tonight and give you an idea of some of the available resources and some of the available need, or uh, some of the need. So this is the budget that you look at um, every month and just want to call some things out here. We do have about 90 million of the 122 million bid, so about 74% of the projects. Um, we do have, I just want to draw your eye to the top line, that district-wide uh, bucket that is, some of that was set aside for technology upgrades and some of that for FF&E, um, but that has been uh, used minimally so far. And then we had the uh, grant elementary. Initially, we budgeted for some improvements there um, due to the flow of the restructuring. Uh, we're not 
planning on that anymore, and then we had the Montessori upgrades at Horace Mann, which will now be taking place at uh, Lincoln. So just wanted to call out those couple things uh, for you to keep in mind. We also have the projected interest earnings of five and a half million. So all of this in totality, what we're looking at for current available resources, about $3.1 million, that number on the bottom right in yellow. Any questions on that? That, that 3.1 is without using any of the district wide. That's without, correct? yes, that's just the budget as it stands to date with all those things taken into account. Um, oh, real quick. So the other thing uh, that we had talked about, or that you talked about before I came on board, was uh, the need for a road at Hawthorne Hills. And uh, depending on the use of that building, that road may no longer be needed. The initial estimate for the road was about $1.9 million. Uh, we've been working with Nexus. The updated estimate for that road is a little over $3 million. So that would be a, a significant undertaking uh, to build that road, and depending on the use, of the elementary school may not be necessary. So just want to talk about kind of resources in totality. Uh, we have the current resource resources, $3.1 million, uh, the potential uh, to repurpose maybe some of that Hawthorne Road money, the $1.9 million. I know a little bit of that has been spent on the design, but uh, for the most part that could be recouped and reused. And then the FF&E savings. So that first number, the district-wide, technology number. Uh, we could glean a little savings there, and in our meeting on Wednesday, Lance mentioned that um, we wouldn't want to take away anything that, that was promised. So I, what I did was, for the calculation, was I took the population of the five schools that we are looking at changing the purpose of, and compared it to the population of the total school district, so it's about 850 out of about 8,000. It's a little over, I think, 11%. So I took 11%-ish of that total budget and said that that's money maybe that could be repurposed, that we could use. And then we estimated 4% over on the remaining bids, those you know, $31 million that has to, that has yet to, excuse me, that has yet to be bid. Um, because we were about 4% over at West, and that's about where we're trending projects to date, so it seems like a safe number. So in terms of total available resources, right now we're looking at uh, just over $5 million. Now again, that district-wide, uh, there's no definitive plan for that money, so that is a bucket that could be tapped into. So just wanted to run you through those potential resources. Yep, Sorry, ahead. just just a quick note on the, on the district-wide. The, it was it was meant for um, for technology investments and to replace thirty percent of the furniture in the existing spaces across the district. Um, so new spaces get new furniture. Um, this was to uh, update furniture in thirty percent of the unremodeled spaces. That was the the plan for it. Sorry, just wanted to clarify. Perfect. And please interrupt me at any point. I'm trying to go fast so we can mm -hmm. get to the annual meeting. Um, so we have some projects up here. Um, some of them are initial scope referendum projects. And some of them were identified by the team here as uh, requested add-ons at West specifically, and some of them were not in the initial referendum scope. So we have the four science labs at West. They're descending order of estimated cost from Nexus. So the four science labs at West, um, Marshall and Franklin, both need uh, AC in the schools, so that's listed on there. The additional road at Hawthorne, as I noted, that is now up to a little more than $3 million in terms of the estimate. And then a, a roof at Riverview, that's a big need, $1.6 million. Uh, the bleacher and gym storage and the community room at West. And the reason that these are grouped together is because you cannot do the community room without doing the bleacher storage. You guys know all of that. So it's just grouped together in, in one lump. Uh, parking expansion at West, the roof at Main, uh, fire alarm system at East, doing a, a complete upgrade of that. Some money was budgeted in the referendum, um, but it's looking like the need is actually a little greater. Um, air chiller in the field house, parking expansion at South Mountain, and then um, kind of some nuts and bolts things at West in terms of ceiling tile replacement on the second and third floor. 30 roof warranty, uh, sound system in the band room, and then large group room displays. If, if I could just um, 
the four of the elementary items we added on here. Um, as they're 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 uh, items of interest, but also if we could invest in some of those, that could reduce the cost on a on a potential future referendum because we know we pulled sixty million dollars of elementary work out of that out of the previous referendum. So um, the AC is tough because the the price tag, a couple of river, uh, a couple of roofs. That that's why we added some elementary in there. They were not in this scope, but it's something for the board to consider in, in totality. Thank you. Yep. Um, so all told, that's more than $23 million worth of uh, identified you know, high-level need. And we talked about the $5 million of available resources. Some other things to consider, uh, the potential cost of rebranding. I know Nexus uh, is working on that mm -hmm. right now. So it's coming up that next soon. meeting. Yep. And uh, any potential 4K renovations, again, depending on what happens with those elementary schools. So I think the last slide I have is a... Now, this is not the updated version. I apologize. We have... There's um, two. There's another there's one. more. Mm -hmm. Okay. There we go. Um, so that is the most recent drawing of what it would look like to add those science classrooms to West. Again, that's um, right off the main entrance there where you walk in to not the commons but the office area. And by the way, the science wing currently is up and to the right on that same floor. So I know that was really fast. Yeah. If you have any questions, I'll try my best to answer them. Correct, second floor. Mm -hmm. So next summer, next summer they'll start uh, the first uh, first floor building out of that first floor. So can I just clarify what you're showing roughly is that we'll have potentially a little over five million overage after everything is originally bid out and then we have 23 million worth of we'd love to spend in these areas that's okay. a very succinct summary mm -hmm. okay. got it thanks i i have um way too much too many questions and concerns for the time we have this evening uh, so i will attempt to schedule a separate meeting with staff to get those answers for us for the next meeting, but please expect me to be discussing it at our next meeting on October 9th. Thanks for the warning. <laughs> can I ask just one question then though about the, can you go back Josh to the list of potential add-ons? It says that the community room bleacher gym storage was a requested add-on at West. Yeah. So at the July 10th meeting, that the board approved the 95% design for West. On slide 11 and 18 of that presentation, it clearly listed the community room as being part of the plans as presented, which is the motion that we had approved. For the bid. For the bid. So if we approve that at the 95% level, why is that $1.2 million feature not included in that number for West on the previous slide. So my, and I don't want to speak for Nexus. Do you have an answer to that or would you like me to? Uh, regarding the, can you hear me okay? Well, so this uh, is Nick Anderson from Nexus. Um, I can't speak to, I think you said the July 19th meeting. 10th, okay. but yeah. Okay. Um, but I know that when the project went out for bid, the community room and the gym bleacher storage area were bid alternates, add alternates. So the way that the documents were issued for bid, it wasn't part of the base bid, it would have been part of an alternate bid. But I don't understand how that, yeah, how I did that get screwed yeah, up? Yeah, I don't understand it either because I came to this board in February and asked for an additional $400,000 to complete the design in a really awesome, positive way for that building because Duane at Somerville came up with a great solution. And we talked about, it was a special thing in February. We talked about 400,000 and Sharon Gould corrected me that she might need 450 to make it more reasonable. So that's on, on record in the videos, okay? And I was part of the design team and that's why I sound upset because I too expected at July 10th, this is a big surprise that this got carved out because this was always a part of the discussions. And I 
really would like to know why it got kicked off. The whole thing was over budget at design level, but I'm sure that all of us thought that this thing was included because it was on what we approved. When you say always event. part of the discussion, you mean part of the referendum scope or all it, we discussed always it as Always a part of the design on. meetings. Always a part of the add design on. meetings. The community room was a solution to needing more space in the cafeteria to begin with to make the kitchen design better. Mm -hmm. So then what did we do with the things that are in that storage area now? Well, we added on to the southeast corner, and that's why I came to you in February, and we knew about that in February already, to ask for that additional money that we really should do this and to get what the school needed for its current arrangement, right? And so... so I'm really not understanding why that part got hacked off. Right. What we passed is not what is in that bid because that, yeah. so the bid is, our, our bid is not just 1 million something over. It's actually 2.3 million over because that 1.2 should be attributed to the 31 yeah. uh, million 88,000. I, I hear your question and I don't know how to answer that. We will have to go back and look and see what happened. I, I don't have an answer for you right now. Does anybody, board members, disagree that we should not be? To me, that it, it's not an it's not a discussion. It was already passed in mm -hmm. the motion in plans as presented. Well, I want to know whether or not that was part of the original referendum scope, or if it was an add-on. Well, I, but if I it was a four hundred thousand dollar add-on, absolutely. So let me go back and that's a great question. figure out what happened. And although I was here July tenth, I wasn't here previously. You're, you're so forgiven. Let me, you're, you're okay. You're, you're forgiven. Don't worry. Let me find out, and we will let you know. Yeah. Right. Any other questions? Uh, this is Sharon Gould on Nexus. I might be able to assist with that answer. If um, I don't mean to interrupt, but I am available for that question if you need to ask it. Sure, Sharon, if you can answer that, that would be great. Sorry, I forgot you were out there. Okay. Yeah, so part of what we do is the strategy of making sure that um, every project comes in on bid day on budget. And so um, when we do a final pass at the um, scope of work, we look at areas that might, um, you know, allow for, you know, construction to start this fall without it having to go back into the ringer. So it was more of a budget protection issue versus a scope. Um, the scope didn't go away. It's still there as an alternate. Um, but as you can see, we are a little bit over budget on that. So we needed to participate in this conversation to make sure that we took the right steps to move forward. Well, then, then does we, that answer your question? Yeah, unfortunately it does, and I don't like the answer. Absolutely. Yeah, because the, the, you should have came and talked to us. It, right. And, and here's the deal. When you add on the 1.2 and all the other things on your list, um, mm -hmm. it, it brings us to 1.9. So then the design budget going up, in, or the bid, the bid budget, or the bids coming in at 31 million over the design at 29,895 plus the 1.9 puts us at $3 million over total, right? So that hits our 10% threshold where you should have been coming to talk to us anyway. So, right. So, all, all I, this, you know, we were, I think we were all kind of on board. I, I sure as heck was since February. We, yeah. So, we, we just we, talked to us. But we have to quit advertising that we're on budget. We're not on budget. The, the, the estimate is not on budget. All we did is reduce scope. When I built my house, I, I could not exclude the roof just so I could hit my freaking mortgage target. I understand. What I mean, you just... It, <laughs> right, what what, what else is not in there? What, what about the drain tile for the athletic fields? I heard that that was cut too, which it wasn't supposed to be from my understanding. Is that going in or not? Sharon. Um, uh, Brian, would you be able to answer that? Yeah. Brian's on the call as well. I can help with that. Um, um, Nick, please, I'm going to defer to Nick, but I do believe that was held as an alternate. And from my from our budgeting, that had not been included. That was not turf, and there was not a scope to add drain tile in the referendum. Right. The, the scope was turf on the infields, and we were told in one of these meetings that the, it, the turf was not needed in the outfield. It was too expensive, and we could achieve the goals of being able to use the outfields in the spring by adding the drain tile. And we all looked at one another and shook our heads and said, yeah, that, that's a good, 
a, a good compromise. It's cheaper, but it will accomplish what we want it to accomplish. And now I've heard that, that you've confirmed that's not in there. So now we're going to have turf on an infield and, in theory, continue to have unplayable fields in the spring because you need a whole field to play, right? Outfield can't be a swamp. So how did... So, so how many more of these things have been cut? I mean, that's one that like two. I mean, these are things that we've approved and they've gone forward. We have this agreement, 10%, come to us. You didn't come to us. You just cut them. Sorry, that's kind of bull crap. Yeah, I think we, I mean, we need to be involved in deciding what's cut. You know, for example, I've had um, people from the baseball community tell me that having that outfield usable is much more important than lights. And so that's the kind of feedback that we can help provide when we're deciding it's not a surprise to me that things have to be cut when you pass a referendum and then it's going to, it's getting built two years later and we've had this huge inflation. It's not, not a surprise to me that we have to reduce what we had planned in order to stay on budget, but we need to be involved in that reduction. Absolutely. So it sounds like, if I'm hearing this, a lot of these things were requested, possibly approved, and then uh, the, the communication didn't happen one way or another to the board. Yeah, so, so we're sitting... We'll need to bring that, bring that communication to you. Wes, you along, back. along with the estimates for to finish the drain tile. And to, anything to, else. Yeah, and, and anything else. We had a different strategy with the drain tile. We wanted to go with somebody local outside the scope of this to save some money and get it done. So I think I sent a memo to the board a few months ago, but that's, that's one, of the one, one of the reasons we did that. <clears throat> So in other words, we are going to have drain tile or the alternative to drain tile so that the fields are playable, which I won't go down the road where I felt we missed on this earlier, but uh, we will have that field ready to be able to play on. In the we'll have to look at timelines, Jim, but that, that was the strategy around drain tiles, was to go with someone local, save some money, get yeah, the same outcome. That. So. Well, you have a lot of questions and a lot of comments from the board. Yeah, I appreciate it. Anything well, else? To Cody's point, is someone going to aggregate all the things that were cut that we are not aware of? Well, I think we should just have put West on the next meeting so we can just look at all of it, right? Right. Yeah. Is it? Do. But is it just West? I, right. I don't know. Alternate bid. You're looking for the alternate bid lists. I'm looking for what was cut, like without us knowing that it was already. Right? Like the community. Absolutely. I mean, I just looked at that slide from July 10th. I mean, you're doing on there. Part of the right? Right. Right. It's on there. I, I it's completely moderate, believe you. I think it was a moderate renovation. Okay. Yeah. You've got some directives. Sounds yep. good comments. Thank you. And uh, any other comments? Otherwise, we'll, get, we'll continue to move along. I'm, if there's no motion on this, obviously no. this was all information and discussion that we needed to have. Uh, so at this point in time, I'm going to seek a motion for adjournment. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much.